Hi everybody, you can see the latest update to the game now. I've added uh, quite a few things. Uh, now that when you destroy a drone, we have a floating nuke power up, just kind of floating around there. And if I can let it uh, stay on the screen long enough, you'll see that as it floats around, it'll start to blink slowly and then start to blink more quickly just before it disappears. So we have a limited time to pick it up uh, by our ship and then use it. And every time we do pick one up, uh, we see our nukes at the top left there. We can hold a maximum of 10. And uh, when you do have them loaded, you can just hit the N key on your keyboard and then launch a nuke. And when it does blow up, when it hits a drone or when you shoot your laser at it, causing it to blow up, it, the explosion is much, much larger and anything that uh, flies into it uh, will be destroyed as well, including yourself, so you have to be careful using this. I've also made it so that if, um, if you fire a few of them at a time, you can shoot one of them, or one of them detonates, and then the others nearby will also detonate, creating a larger explosion. So that's pretty cool. I'm having a lot of fun with it. As you can see, though, I'm still not very good at my own game, uh, but maybe later on we'll be able to tweak it a bit and make it a little more playable. Uh, but for now, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's fun designing these things. So I want to go through the code for this now. The first part that we'll go through just in this video is the floating power-up icons. So as you destroy the drone, they float around and then we pick them up, incrementing the number of nukes we have available. In a follow-up video, we'll go through actually firing and, and destroying the nukes, exploding them. So let's start at the top here. The maximum number of nuke power-ups, so the PU in the code is for power-up, will be 15 and we'll store all of our available power-ups in a fixed array, just like we've done in previous videos. It'll be the nuke power-ups, or sorry, nuke, yeah, nuke power-ups. And uh, they will hold a new struct called a nuke power-up. But first, let's go through uh, our create entities uh, function, where this is where we're creating all of our entities, like explosions and, and lasers and drones, and then we're populating our arrays that we can use later on. Right here, in, uh, let's see, here we go. We'll start here. We create our uh, texture. We grab our PU underscore nuke PNG. Of course, you'll find that in the code. Check for errors. And we grab the height and the width with the query texture. This should all look familiar at this point. And then we uh, go, we create a loop going through up to 15 iterations. So we create our 15 instances of the nuke power up that's being stored in the array. The nuke power up struct looks like this. It's very similar to other structs where we hold a destination rect dx dy, but this time we're holding an animation uh, object as well in this, and as well as a counter and an alpha. So the alpha is necessary because we want to make the icon blink slowly at first and a little more quickly as it approaches the time where it'll disappear completely. The counter helps us keep track of how many frames are, are, going, are uh, passing so that we can uh, change the the alpha, the transparency of the icon, which gives it that blink effect. The animation we need to hold on each object because, of course, every object appears at a different time, so the animation needs to be uh, distinct from other animations. Unlike our other animations where we have the fade in, fade out, and it's, it's one, it's covering the whole screen, each one of these power-ups needs its own animation. So let's go through where we're creating these. We start to initialize the power up object just with the destination rect. We set the height and the width to a seventh of the actual uh, PNG. And you can play around with this and um, you know make it the size that you like, but I was pretty happy with this size. We create an animation object right here, just bare bones at this point because down below is where we will define our start function, our maybe run function, and then each of the frames. What's important to know about this, because we need a unique animation for every object, each power-up object, and Odin is not an object-oriented language, we have no way of, in our start procedure, for example, referring to self, that is, referring to the object which is calling the start function. So instead, I opted to change the function signatures a little bit. So each one of these uh, functions, start, maybe run, and then in each frame, we have an action uh, function. Each of those will take at minimum the index, and that would be the index of the power-up object in our array. And that allows us in each of these functions to reach back into our array 
and grab the object that is actually calling that function. So that's what I came up with. If you know a better way, let me know. Uh, but so far, that's working pretty well. So in our start function, when is this even called? Uh, first, let's go back to our array. These will be called, uh, these will be started, of course, when one of our lasers collides with a drone, destroying it. So we've destroyed our drone. We increment our score, which we, you would have seen in a previous video. And then we iterate through all of our power-up objects, and we find the first one whose animation is inactive. So it's not even on the screen, it's inactive. So we start it. And when we start it, that uh, activates the animation. You can see uh, right here is active true. It sets the current frame of the animation, of course, to zero, resets it, sets the speed and the X and Y coordinate to that of the drone that was just destroyed. So the drone's destination object is passed in, and we can grab the XY and the speed from that. We reset our counter to zero. The counter and the alpha go together to create that blinking effect, and you'll see that below uh, when we cover each individual frame. Now, after we have started this, of course, we need to check should we even run the animation. And the maybe run functions are called at the end of the loop, just before we start rendering our title. You remember that we did a maybe run check for beginning a stage, resetting the stage. It creates the fade in and fade out effect, for example. And I want to run our power up animations before that so that if the screen is fading in and out, it will all that fade will, will also cover uh, the, the floating power up objects. So that's why I call it right here. And of course, we have to check every possible uh, power up. So maybe run is right here, defined right here. Again, we pass in the index so that we can check. Each one will be at a different stage in its animation cycle, so we have to grab the right one. If the current frame is past two, so there's only three total frames, so that's the index, checking index two. There's three frames, um, and we'll go through those in a moment. If it's uh, one of the first frames and it's still active, then we'll grab the current frame and we'll check for collisions. So this is new. With uh, this floating object, we want to see if the player collides with the object, thereby picking it up. And if we pick it up, if there's a hit, there's a collision, then we'll set the animation to uh, is active false so that it'll no longer be rendered because we've picked it up. It doesn't have to float around anymore. And we'll increment our number of player nukes. And you'll see on the top left screen, you saw how the nukes kind of uh, get added to like a chamber of, of nukes. If uh, we're still under the limit of our maximum, which is uh, 15, then we'll increment our nukes and another, another icon will appear up there. And that'll be in a, another video where I cover all of that. And then we call our frame action. The frame action is where we check some other things. And I always want to uh, move, uh, like we're moving the, the, the thing around. We want to make sure our collisions are checked before we move. I mentioned in previous videos that that was a rule of thumb I kind of came up with and it's been working well where all my collisions are checked based on the visible position of the item uh, or the object of the entity. Uh, right now it hasn't been moved yet, so our collision detection will make sense to somebody looking at the screen. I don't want to move it before the collision is de uh, detected. So we'll increment our frames. What do our frames look like? The first frame, again, we're passing in the index to the action function, so we can grab the proper object out of our, our array. And I'm moving the X and Y, and I'm moving them based on the speed that was passed in, the DX from the drone that was destroyed. But one's divided by two, the other's divided by four. So after playing around a little bit, I'm not an expert at moving things around by any means, but I, I divide them by different numbers, so it kind of made it look like it was floating around a little bit. And you may notice in, in the video, if you watch it again at the beginning, that sometimes the icons just kind of zoom off to the side. I have no idea why it's doing that yet. I'll figure it out eventually, and then I'll be sure to post a video about that. But for now, it's working pretty well, aside from that weird bug that pops up from time to time. So I set off the X and the Y positioning at slightly different rates, so it kind of makes it look like it's floating. And I set the texture mod to the alpha. Now this first frame, the alpha is 255, which is fully solid. And then I render that uh, texture. But in the next frame, depending on the counter, so here's where we're referencing the counter on the object. If we're over 15, then we'll reset the counter. And so every 15 frames, 
we'll set our alpha to um, we'll, we'll change the alpha so it gives it like a blink uh, blinking effect if the alpha is fully solid then we'll set it to 100 otherwise it's 100 we'll set it back to 255 so that creates that blinking effect and that happens every 15 frames and then we again set our x and y set our texture alpha right there to the alpha that was just set above and then we render and then we increment our counter so that counter every 15 frames gets reset again now the final frame the counter is reset every three frames so the blinking happens more quickly so what you'll see is it's blinking slowly and as it reaches the end of its animation it starts to blink more quick more quickly and hopefully communicates that hey it's going to disappear soon so you better hustle if you want to grab it and again we uh, set the alpha and everything now the final thing to be conscious of is we have to reset these when we do our uh, reset entities so you know maybe we've died in the game it's got to reset everything then we reset this right here where we reset other things like um let's see what do you have so far drones the drone lasers the game lasers everything's reset in reset entities so i had to add that there as well so that our our power power ups all get reset and they're no longer um active on the screen hopefully that's easy to follow if you have any questions about anything please put them down below and keep an eye out for the next video where i'll go through everything that i did for the nukes cheers